Hello, I'm Erin. It's such an honor to be spending a little time with you today discussing the heart of compassion and how God desires to develop that spiritual blessing in us. Compassion is an attribute of God that he bestows on us for our good and the good of others. When we are generous to those who are powerless to reciprocate, we are truly showing the love of God. And if you want true joy that comes from the Lord, there is no better way to obtain it. Compassion is a command from God. It is at the very heart of God's royal law to love our neighbors as ourselves. Compassion should characterize our relationship with others on a personal level. Jesus Christ is our ultimate example of compassion. He took on all our pain and sin as his own in order to identify with us. 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4 says, Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we are ourselves receive from God. I love that verse, the God of all comfort who first comforts us so we can be a blessing. In other words, the one who equips and prepares us with all we need to be of help to others. For many of us, compassion may be very natural and intuitive. We position ourselves to see and want to understand the hurts of others, to make ourselves available for others. This may be more challenging, and we have a sense of inadequacy to help in the way that we feel compassion should look or feel like. Many years ago, God took me on a journey to discovering a very important lesson in compassion. When I was 18, I worked at the Chicago Hilton Towers. I would take the train and walk several blocks to work. During that walk, I discovered that I was drawn to see those suffering all around me, the homeless, the struggling with addiction and the elderly. I took note of how they slept and wondered why some didn't have shoes. I wondered how they survived at night. Why were they all alone? Visions of what I would see during the day would haunt me at night. I would stay up and figure out different things I could give them or ways I could help. This desire and passion started to take root in me. I had no fear of helping because I trusted my heart and the amazing resources available all around me. Ten years later, I started working here at church in a compassion ministry that helped families enduring some kind of crisis or hardship. I spent hundreds of hours over several years listening to heartbreaking stories. I would work very hard at supporting families emotionally, giving them great resources, and building teams that would work alongside us to help these families. However, I started to feel very weary and anxious. I started to suffer from anxiety attacks and sadness. I felt this huge weight that was bearing down on me, and I was trying to hold it up and manage everything on my own abilities and strength. God, in his abundance of compassion for me, brought people into my life during that time that spoke truth to me and helped me realize I couldn't help all these people in need. Only God could. God didn't call me to fix it. He called me to display for others the dependence I have on him, and he will do the rest. What freedom, what sheer delight to have the confidence to say, I'm not equipped, but he is, and I want it no other way. Compassion isn't about what we can do for others. It's all about what God has done for us. Compassion is truly a reflection of the mercy God has showered upon us that others can see in us. In developing God's heart for compassion, we need more of him. As we continue to pursue him through his word and prayer, he will grow your wisdom and discernment. He will give you a desire to hold fast to truth and holiness because we want to honor him. I have discovered when I draw closer to Jesus, I become more sensitive to sin, not just mine, but others. And at times I admit it's easy for me to err on the side of being judgmental in some situations. It's hard to extend compassion towards people who are hateful and bitter, who seemingly don't want to change. How do we treat these complicated, broken people? We love them. We treat others the way we would like to be treated. That's why it's so vital to imitate our Father in heaven and be merciful, keeping our eyes focused on Jesus and trust he will prepare your heart and align your emotions in a way that will display what he desires, which is repentance, restoration, and transformation. The Bible repeatedly reveals that God is a God of compassion. We read in Psalms, but you, O Lord, are compassionate and gracious, God. Another one is, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. 
The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. In James, we read, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. One of the most compassionate stories in the Bible is the Good Samaritan, found in Luke. It was about a man who was going to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. Beaten and left for dead, people ignored him. Even a priest and a Levite passed right by him without helping. But when the Samaritan came, he took pity on him and cared for him, not only physically, but also financially, for paying for him to stay in the inn until he was better. There are some important takeaways we can glean from this story. First, love your neighbor as yourself means love everyone. God has made it clear we are to love one another like the Samaritan did with the love and kindness he extended to the stranger. Second, take action. The Samaritan put his life aside for the moment and did what was required to make sure the man got the help he needed. Third, don't judge people by their appearance or status. People are not always who they seem to be. And lastly, don't search for a reward for your good deeds. The very best reward that comes is knowing you're pleasing God. Jeremiah 17.10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. I have come to understand one of the most distinguishing characteristics of a disciple of Jesus' compassion, to be deeply moved and concerned about the sufferings of others and willing to come alongside them and point them to the one who can do all the healing. Isn't it amazing that God does it all? If we look to him and yield our heart to what God wills for us, to be people that love and care for others, he will equip us with all we need to graciously lavish compassion on others. Please join me today in carving out some time to look at one scripture on compassion and commit to praying through that verse. You'll find some options I've included for you in the description section below. When you find one, write it out and personalize it by adding your name in the verse. Ask God to help you see and understand how to align your heart with His when it comes to compassion.